In this video, we'll dive into the world of conformal coating, exploring everything you need to know about this magical substance that acts as a protective shield for your circuit board. It's applied as a thin protective layer that keeps your electronics guarded against moisture, dust, and other environmental impacts. There are several types of conformal coating. Each has its unique characteristics, properties, and advantages. We'll dive into the details and help you decide which is best for your application. Don't worry, I'll also show you how to specify where your manufacturing partner should apply conformal coating to the PCB. Trust me, it's easier than you might think. I'm Mark Harris, one of Altium's industry expert consultants. Thanks for joining me as we explore conformal coating. If you have any questions along the way, please leave a comment on the video. Various industries use conformal coatings on their circuit boards, such as aerospace, automotive, marine, and medical devices. However, I feel conformal coating should be more widely used in other industries to reduce failure rates and the cost of replacing hardware that has suffered environmental damage. So what are the different types of conformal coatings on the market? Your primary options are acrylic, silicon, or urethane-based coatings. Each type of coating has unique properties and characteristics. For example, urethane-based conformal coatings are known for their toughness and adhesion, while being strongly resistant to solvents. These properties make them a good choice for use in the harshest environments. Acrylic-based conformal coatings are the easiest and the cheapest to apply, and have UV exposure resistance, making them an excellent general purpose protection option. Silicon-based conformal coatings are more flexible and resistant to both temperature extremes and vibration, which makes them an excellent choice for use on components that experience high mechanical stress levels. That being said, it's not all good news. Each coating type has its drawbacks too. For example, I don't stock urethane-based conformal coatings, as they either need to be heated in an oven for an extended period, or exposed to UV light to cure, depending on the formulation. Acrylic does not withstand high temperatures well, and most solvents will remove it, so it may not be suitable in some environments. While all conformal coatings act as a thermal barrier, preventing components from dissipating heat, silicon typically has the highest thermal resistance. I'm not even discussing epoxy-based conformal coating in this video, as it's just not friendly to small batch sizes. Always a two-part mix with limited pot life, need specialized spray equipment if you want to spray it on, and dielectric strength is relatively poor. It's also extremely hard, which sounds like a great thing, until you consider thermal expansion or vibration of the circuit board, which can lead to the epoxy damaging the components or solder joints. If you want to use an epoxy coating, my advice is only to do so if you have discussed it in depth with your manufacturing partner. Speaking of discussing conformal coating with your manufacturing partner, did you know that you can specify areas for the conformal coat to be applied directly in Altium? You can then share this information with your manufacturing partner for design review through the Altium 365 platform, or through generated outputs, just like you would with any other board data. You can specify a new component layer pair in the view configuration panel and set the layer type to coating. Now you can create regions on your board where you want the conformal coat to be applied and include the coating layer in your output files. It's really that simple. Just keep in mind that conformal coating is typically applied to broad areas of the board with spray or brush after assembly but we'll discuss that more in a minute. 
you're enjoying the video, remember to show some love by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel for more electronics magic like this. So while there likely is a conformal coating for your application, let's talk about some key factors to consider when selecting a conformal coating for your project. One of the first things to consider is the compatibility of the conformal coating and your board, plus its components. It's essential to ensure that the coating will adhere properly to the substrate and not interfere with the performance of the coated components. As I mentioned earlier, the conformal coating will act as a thermal barrier. Therefore, it may only be appropriate for electronics dissipating a lot of heat by adding extra thermal management solutions. Another critical factor to consider is the thickness of the conformal coating. Conformal coatings are typically applied as a thin film, which can limit their ability to protect against mechanical damage. However, applying the coating too thickly can cause stress on the coated components and lead to failure. In addition, each coating type's thermal expansion coefficient is different and can vary dramatically between brands. For example, Suppose your board experiences significant temperature cycling and the conformal coating's thermal expansion coefficient is not well matched to the board. In that case, you can cause premature failure of the components you are trying to protect. In addition to compatibility and thickness, it's also necessary to consider the thermal properties of the conformal coating. For example, some conformal coatings are highly insulating and can retain heat, while others are more thermally conductive and can dissipate heat more effectively. Therefore, it's crucial to choose a conformal coating that is appropriate for the intended application. You need to ensure that it will not cause any issues with the thermal performance of the coated components. Several methods for applying conformal coatings include spraying, brushing, and dipping. The best method will depend on the size and complexity of the assembly, production volume, as well as the properties of the conformal coating itself. I mostly use a brush or aerosol can application, though I also work on very low volumes. In volume production, aerosols are often very fast to apply. However, you need to consider the time to mask off areas such as connectors that you don't want to be coated. Large production runs can be an excellent opportunity to use specialized selective spraying or robotic systems to apply the coating. Depending on the industry you're working in, you may need to consider the certification of the coating. Most conformal coating options meet industry standards such as UL746E and IPCCC830C. UL746E is a standard developed by Underwriters Laboratories that establishes requirements for the performance and safety of polymer materials used in electronic products. IPC CC 830C is a specification developed by IPC that defines the requirements for conformal coatings used to manufacture electronic assemblies and printed circuit boards. Conformal coatings that meet these standards have been tested and evaluated for their performance and safety and can provide additional protection and reliability to your project. At a bare minimum, you should be using a coating with UL94V0 certification, ensuring the coating will self-extinguish and not continue to burn if exposed to fire. Before applying the conformal coating to your PCB, the board must be clean and free from contaminants. You can clean your board using various methods, such as solvents or giving it an ultrasonic bath. Just follow the manufacturer's recommended cleaning procedures to ensure that the PCB is properly prepared and ready to apply the conformal coating. A little bit of cleaning can save a lot of hassle in the future. As a final point to consider, if your board needs to be reworked for repairs in the future, 
then acrylic based conformal coating is your best choice. You can solder right through it or strip it off with a non aggressive solvent like isopropanol. If you use an epoxy or urethane acrylate and the board develops a fault, there's little chance you'll be able to do much in the way of repairs. Obviously, we always hope our hardware will work forever, but parts do fail. If your company typically expects to repair boards rather than replace them, this may impact your options for conformal coating. I hope this video has been helpful and has given you a better understanding of conformal coatings, how to choose the right one for your project. Thanks for watching.